the story being told here is only indirectly related to my daughter's death, but it is a story worth telling, because it speaks to the total lack of integrity within the state bureaucracy, not just in Queensland, but I suspect pretty much everywhere in Australia and overseas. People are the same wherever you might encounter them. Very few act with courage and integrity. I am yet to encounter a single highly placed person in Queensland who has shown any trace of honesty or integrity. And I have no expectation of ever finding one. I know that every government office and agency that I have approached about Dr. Hassel is working to ensure that I get nowhere. I don't think that it's a grand conspiracy. I just think that the system is set up to fail. Each agency does its bit, and the end result is a total whitewash of the situation. I don't believe that anyone gives a shit about Hansel. Everyone in government is a ladder climber, so nobody wants a scandal on their watch, therefore cover-ups occur. And as more people and agencies come on board, the lies get bigger and the potential consequences become more profound. Eventually, the downside becomes way too steep to even contemplate doing the right thing. Not that doing the right thing is ever an option, but when a complainant persists, the truth sometimes eventually emerges, as it will with regard to Claire. I only hope that some of the conspirators are still around when this happens. Anyway, let's find out what important protectors of the public did when a parent complained about his daughter's sexual abuser. Hi John. I'm Robert. Thanks for agreeing to meet with me. No problem. Nice to be here. You have quite a story to tell. It's a long one, but I know that you are traveling the same path. So I'll give you the short version. Let's sit. My daughter Katrina was 14 when it all began. We were living in Adelaide. Katrina was a ward of the state. A predator got access to her while Katrina was in care. He groomed her for two years. He was feeding her drugs and using her for sex while the state was responsible for her welfare. You were aware of this at the time? Yeah. I talked to family services, but they weren't listening and the police. I don't know how many times I tried to alert the authorities to the risk Katrina was at. I got the impression that they didn't really care. Apart from their failure to hear what you were saying, or to act, was there anything in particular that crystallized that thought for you? Oh yes. Welfare and police both knew that Andrew Smith, the predator, had been convicted of charges relating to another teenage girl. Pretty much the same story. Indecent assault and supplying drug. So it was a pretty fair bet that he was doing to Katrina exactly what you said he was doing. There's no doubt that they knew exactly what was going on. He was convicted on those matters while he was with Katrina. While she was a ward of the state, she also had his baby, while still a minor, and whilst still in state care. Doesn't make sense, does it? A complete abdication of responsibility for the welfare of a minor. I can understand why a cover-up happened. It's just incomprehensible why they let the situation happen in the first place. You won't be surprised to hear this. But the cover-up went as high as it could go, just as it already has in your daughter's case. I raised the issue with a number of child welfare ministers, but got nowhere with any of them. Dean Brown. Jay Wetherill. Jennifer Rankin. I also tried to get Premier Mike Rand to show some leadership, but he wasn't interested. Politicians, especially the successful ones, often have psychopathic personalities. And politicians are generally invertebrates. Ombudsmen are no better. Two state ombudsmen refused to assist me. We have a few ombudsmen occupying sinecures in Queensland. They are all corrupt, in my opinion. They just don't realize it. They actually believe that they are acting appropriately. Then the government set up an office of public integrity, and I thought, okay that sounds promising. Ooh, integrity. What was I thinking? They wouldn't look at the issue, either. 
The picture could not have been more clear, both about Smith and about cover-up. But no one was willing to see a thing. I outlined the issues that I'd had with family services and with the police, but the Office of Public Integrity didn't want to know. So how did you manage to get some traction? Well, I'd been chasing my tail for a decade and a half, and there was this commission of inquiry going on into institutional child sexual abuse. I took the issue there, and all of a sudden, someone who wasn't in it for the votes or the promotional opportunities, finally heard me. More importantly, Katrina was recognized as a real person, who had been comprehensively let down by every level of government. Once the commission wound up, Katrina's matter was formally investigated, Smith was charged, prosecuted and jailed. You did right by your daughter, John, 17 years. It's disgusting that anyone should have to battle so many government agencies for so long, and they still won't concede any wrongdoing. And of course, the court case only dealt with the predator. If it were me, I'd be taking action against the state, criminally and civilly. The police haven't helped you so far, so there's little reason to think they'll help you now. But there's always the option of private prosecutions. No one will take responsibility for what has happened with my daughter. They knew Katrina was being given drugs. They knew she was being sexually abused by Smith. They knew he was the father of her child, but they did not act. This whole situation is nothing short of a disgrace and I am certain I am not the only parent who has had the same experience with the welfare system in South Australia. Maybe John will settle for just getting an outcome for his daughter. Maybe he will now be able to move on with his life and simply choose to do so, and whatever he chooses to do, I wish him well. I want an outcome for my daughter too. Surely, it is not too much to ask that the system stops protecting Hassel and allows a fair and thorough investigation of the circumstances of Claire's death to proceed. It's not as if you people are being clever. You are doing what every government does at the slightest sign of trouble. So far, I have been disbelieved, ignored, attacked personally and professionally. Passed from agency to agency, knowing that it's all about stalling and delay. And you assume that at some point, I'll either give up or die. It's so predictable that if it wasn't so serious, it would be funny. But I'm in it for the long haul, and I propose to make an incredible amount of noise between now and when I eventually get the outcome I want. The crazy thing is that, if just three or four questions are answered honestly, we will all know whether or not Hassel deliberately ended Claire's life. These answers can be secured in a day. Those answers, I am sure, will then lead to an investigation. If a fair and thorough investigation finds that Hassel did nothing wrong, then you will never hear from me again. If it finds otherwise, then actions taken now, may very well protect the well-being of dozens, perhaps hundreds of vulnerable children in Queensland. And I might get some justice for my daughter. John named some of the people who failed his daughter. I am going to name the people who I have asked for help, and who have failed my daughter so far. Many of these people are still placed to right the wrong currently being perpetrated by agencies of the Queensland government. Some of you, I am addressing right now. It is never too late to help, and I encourage you to find a way to do so. Just so you know, this little movie, all of my previous movies, and all of my future movies will be publicly posted to YouTube. I intend to use voice actors to increase the authenticity of future movies, and maybe I'll use a different multimedia interface. I intend to promote my content via Twitter, Facebook, Messenger, WeChat, Instagram, QQ and other social media platforms. This will give the issues a potential reach of close to 3 billion people, if you believe the online statistics. 
I'll settle for 1% of 1% of that, because 300,000 people is more than enough to make any politician pay attention, and I have years to reach that audience and the determination to do so. The following agencies and key personnel have been approached by me, and all have either dismissed my concerns, referred them elsewhere, or simply ignored them. So far, not one person or agency has provided me with any hope, or assisted me in any practical way, perhaps with the exception of Jackie Tran, who at least gave me a direction in which to look for support. I won't bother naming the drones in each organization. But I do want to say that some of these people have proven themselves to be the most lacking in conscience. Sadly, they are also the people who are advising the decision makers. I suspect that they spend more time poisoning minds than producing constructive outcomes. Anyway, here we go. From Children's Health Queensland, the board and the executive group, particularly, Fiona Duggan and John Wakefield, who ensured that I was arrested and faced trumped up charges in 2015. The entire treating team at Royal Children's Hospital, Cowards Hall, Ross P. Curtin, who directly protected Hasso, in the full knowledge of his revolting behaviors towards parents and children. From Pathology Queensland, Tom Robertson, who knows exactly what happened to Claire but refuses to say and refuses to accept any responsibility for her death, despite allowing the whole process to be set in motion. And the head of Pathology Queensland, Mark Waters, who was only prepared to speak to me under seal, and even then, I believe that he lied to me. From Queensland Health, no less than three Directors General, Ian Maynard, Michael Cleary, and in my opinion the most pernicious of the three, the current DG, Michael Walsh. Of course, Wakefield has to be listed here too, after he was promoted out of Children's Health Queensland, where in my opinion he'd done more than enough damage. Although it's a tough competition between them and Oho's senior staff, arguably the most toxic group of people I have met are in the office of the DG followed by some of the senior personnel at the office of the health minister. None more so in my opinion than Springboard's chief of staff, Jake Smith, the ugly conservative. Smith and Springboard established Toho, so they have a lot to answer for. Right out of the gate, Lawrence Springboard was totally unapproachable. Cameron Dick was even less so. And so far, there has been dead silence from the latest occupant of the health minister's office. But I won't name him yet, as it is possible that he might be the person who instructs Oho to investigate Claire's death. I have to give him a chance. From the office of the health ombudsman, the standout was Leon Atkinson McEwen, in my opinion, the most corrupt and vindictive person I have ever encountered in public office, and that's saying something. Sadly, he has set the tone and left an indelible mark on that organization. It is bereft of value to clean swindlers, because it actively protects the status quo within the health system, and does dirty little deals with the medical board. The acting ombudsman, Andrew Brown, adds nothing to the organization, if my interactions with the man to date are any measure. I can only hope that the next health ombudsman brings a new approach to the office, but I don't think that she will be able to deal with the culture in that office. Like Queensland Health, OHO should be disbanded. It is beyond repair. The office of the Queensland Ombudsman is an apologist for OHO. In my opinion, Phil Clark and his deputies have shown themselves more than willing to back Atkins and McEwen's spiteful decisions, despite being aware of the cloud under which he left office. From the Queensland Police Service, Ian Stewart. The top cop appears to have no interest in wrongs committed by his officers, and no interest in looking at rogue doctors who kill and maim children. There's also a little unit of the QPS that is attached to Queensland Health, called the Police Liaison Unit. It is used by QH to attack people who won't accept no for an answer. It is helping to protect Hassel. Queensland Health is toxic enough without it being given access to a private police force. And finally, the big fish. Yvette Diaf, 
the Attorney General, and the conveyancing clerk who preceded her, Jared Beige. All right, I meant Jared Blay. Ex-Premier Campbell Newman. And the current alleged Premier, Anastasia Palaszczuk. I'm sure that I have missed some people, but I'll catch up with them in a later video. I'm quite certain that after 17 years, John had a longer list of potential felons than I have just identified. But don't you think that Queenslanders would find it frightening to know that all of you people and your important agencies and offices actually contribute nothing of substance to protect them and their children? If you elected and appointed officials lack spine, integrity and compassion, you are pretty much good for nothing and anything you do is unlikely to ever be in the best interests of Queenslanders. Premier, Ministers, please send a message down the line to tell your senior staff to do what's right, not just what's politically expedient. Please provide a fair opportunity for the evidence against Hassel to be considered by people who do not feel the need to protect the government from embarrassment. Thank you.